Hello and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look on how you can use filtered element collector to collect elements from a schedule in their displayed order. To demonstrate, let's see how this works. As you can see, the filtered element collector scans all of the elements in the schedules and assigns them a parameter. So without further ado, let's see how we can do this. Before I start, I would like to mention that this code was not originally written by me. I have actually used some macros written by this group on YouTube. It's a Russian channel, and if you speak Russian, I highly recommend this channel. It has a lot of good macros, a lot of good tutorials on Revit, and not only on Revit. So with that out of the way, let's continue. So I've opened a new project in Visual Studio. This is Jeremy's template. You can check my first video, batch printing in Revit, to see what I'm going to be doing right now, which is setting up the template so it can work correctly. Okay, now that we have everything sorted out, let's start by creating a method that returns a list of elements because what we're trying to do is getting a list of all of the elements right here and a list of all of the elements right here and a list of all of the elements in the third row so I'm gonna be typing so a private list of elements called getting the elements on row we're going to be feeding at the parameters of doc visual uh, the view schedule or the schedule and the row number Okay, I need to add uh, systems.link. So what I've written so far is the table data, getting the table data from the view, and the table section data, getting the table section data from the table data. And we're going to be getting a list of all of the element IDs inside of this view. So this will return a list of all of the element IDs uh, which are here in the view schedule. So you may be asking how we're going to be getting the list of element IDs in their specific order because Revit doesn't support that. In the Revit API, it doesn't support that. What we're going to be doing is something a bit tricky. So first, we're going to be collecting all of the element IDs in this view and then we're going to be deleting one row and then comparing the remaining element IDs to the original batch of element IDs and finding out which one got deleted. And the ones that are deleted, we're going to be assigning them to this list. So this method is going to be returning, returning uh, the element IDs in the rows that is specified right here. And then we're going to be rolling back the transaction. So basically we deleted this and then we like hit control Z on this delete action and we're rolling back. So let's see how we can type that in code. So we're going to be using a transaction. So we have used a sub transaction. We're going to be starting it. And as you can see, table section data, remove row. We're going to be supplying the integer row as the number of the row. And just in just case, we're going to be catching the return null and then commit remaining IDs we've created. After we have deleted this one, we have going to be creating remaining IDs, a new filtered element collector. And it's the same one as here. And then for each element ID 
in the original one if remaining ids contains eid which is right here continue and if not add to element on row we're going to be getting the element from the element id and adding them to the list we have right here and that's it that's how you create this method and to demonstrate this we're going to be using this wall schedule as an example and we're going to be uh, applying uh, a mark a numeric value starting from one two three and so let's see how we can do this so what i'm going to be typing is view schedule vs equals I'm going to be adding a precaution so the, if the user actually starts the yes. command not in a schedule the command will not be working and instead of giving it an error I'm going to be show I'm going to be letting it give him an error and asking him to please open a schedule Okay, now that we have added this precaution, let's get And now we're going to be getting how many rows there is in our view. I'm going to be copying this from here. And integer number rows equals. Okay, now that we have gathered everything we need from the schedule, not in the method. The method itself is going to require all of these. And we're going to be supplying them with this information right here let's gonna be getting rid of all of this what we need right now is a loop so that can loop each and every row of uh, table section data or each row of the schedules that we have so we're going to be using a for loop for integer r equal to zero Okay, now that we have the list of elements on row inside the for loop. So here we, we can, can add all type of modifications. What I'm going to be doing is very simple. I'm going to be taking all of these elements and changing one parameter, changing the mark parameter to one, two, three, four, and so on. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a for each element loop for all of the elements right here. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's recap. We've created a method to collect a list of elements on rows. And then we've created a for loop for getting these elements for multiple rows because this method works in a specific row. And we have to create a for loop for all of the rows that we have in the schedule. And then we get a list of all of the elements and then I make another for loop for each of the elements inside of this, getting the parameter model parameter and setting this parameter to R, which is well, R is zero, but it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now it's obviously you can make it more complicated. The one that I have made for my work has a specific window that you can add from which number you want to start. You can obviously check my other videos to get an idea how to create your own pop-up window and supply any number. Okay, now let's click start and see if this works. Okay, now that I have it running, let's first check if my precaution worked. The one I typed right here should show an error please open a schedule let's see if it works so i go add in external command okay please open a schedule so this thing works okay let's jump right here so go to add-ins and command okay we have an error it's really expected let's see object reference not sent to an instance elements on a row was null okay let's see what the problem is gonna be clicking continue continue Okay, so now we have fixed our two mistakes. The first mistake that we were having is that we have integer r starting at zero, but depending on the way that the user has specified its schedule, uh, actually is the, the first row is this one right here that contains the information about uh, what type of parameters we want to display. So mark, family and type, area and count. 
And the first index is actually this row right here. As you can see, it's blocked out blank row before data. So what we need to actually uh, include in our code is a simple if statement. So if the elements on row does not equal to null, make this stuff. If it's null, do nothing. That's exactly what I have done. And the second mistake is that we were missing a transaction. We have a transaction here. Uh, the one that is actually deleting and then rolling back. But we need another one if we need to actually set the parameters for the elements that we were getting. So I have created a one right here using transaction new. Just getting ideas, just copied this. So let's name it setting parameters. And now starting for each element in the element on row, display uh, the change the old model mark and set them R to string and then commit. So then we're going to be hitting this apply code changes. Now just be careful, not always is going to be available. If you make a lot of changes on your code, it will not work and it will ask you to stop the debugging and restart Revit. I'm going to be hitting this. Okay, no problem so far. Let's go back to Revit. Okay, let's go to add ends external tool and the command. Okay, as you can see, it gives us uh, the mark in their numerical values. So this zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Now let's say I have changed this like this. As you can see, it's all grayed out because a lot of the elements right here have uh, different marks. So Revit will not display anything, but we're gonna be launching the command elements have duplicate mark values okay 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 as you can see it works just like magic now this uh warning is specific to marks only <coughs> obviously you're not going to be using these for marks you're going to be creating a new share parameters called numbering or something and changing yeah. this from the get parameter to built-in parameter to your own parameter you can use the GUID or you can just look up parameter and set it to string now I usually recommend using this with instance parameters because if you're going to be using type parameters you're going to have to do some additional coding uh, you need to get the element type of this element right here and then change its parameters but it's really up to you and your own ingenuity and your own needs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, you can hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next one.